Hey, all you splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. Well, I haven't done this kind of video in quite a while. Uh, most of my Splinterlands related videos lately within the last few months have, have been really news and updates and things of that nature. Haven't done a whole lot of gameplay. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you primarily know that I know I use uh, the Archmage bot to play both of my accounts. However, I still do go in on a weekly basis and I play one of the big features I want to go into during this episode which is uh, the guild brawls okay and if uh, if you've been around the game for a while this uh, this might be old news to you but I I want to try to go in and answer a few questions that I've gotten lately on the channel and this may be warning uh, this may be a longer video uh, uh, if it stretches out a bit I will include some timestamps in the show notes uh, so if you want to jump around please feel free so with that said, if you continue wanting to see um, Splinterlands related content, uh, please like and subscribe, ring that bell. Uh, you know, I try to keep all my different types of content separated in playlists so you don't get alerted uh, if uh, you're not necessarily interested into it. So I'm going to do a few things in this video. Um, Today, uh, I need to put in my guild brawls uh, for, well, I've already done it for my secondary account, but for my primary account. So I want to go ahead and do, do those and play through those and provide a little bit of an explanation for those relatively new to the game. Um, like I said, it might be old news for people who have played for a while, but I, I try to approach this and, and hopefully we get some new users looking at my videos um, and trying to answer some questions. So one of the questions I got, uh, I get on a regular basis every few weeks or so, um, is about uh, how to draw value out of Splinterlands when you're playing Splinterlands. And right up front, I want to say nothing I say is investment advice. I try to approach the game as a game first off. Okay, uh, have I put a lot of money into Splinterlands? I have over the years, um, but uh, I try to primarily approach it as a game. And uh, one of the off uh, shoots of this discussion is the fact that uh, if you are playing in wild format, you can use let a bot, a botted program play uh, your account, which is a wild and uh, a very divisive topic, okay? But it is still legal in wild, so I am using the Archmage bot. But like I said, I do go in and manually play uh, my brawls. But that's one of the ways I get what I consider uh, as much value as I can out of the play system due to how much money I've put into the game. So with that said, I mean, uh, if you just jump in, it's a card game, right? All card games require putting some amount of money into it to buy the cards, right? Um, there are a lot of different card games out there on the Web2 side, which uh, you can invest, put money into to get uh, access to different cards and stuff to play with, but you don't necessarily get anything out of that other than your play value, uh, having fun, um, messing around. Um, Whereas in Splinterlands, one of the big things that attracted me to the game was um, the fact that all the cards you buy within the game, packs you open, you get cards, you can collect, trade, buy, sell the cards, and each card's an NFT. And you can trade, sell that at your whim, right? Uh, whereas in these other uh, Web 2 type card games, you can't do that. But one of the main ways that I've been able to draw, um, make my deck stronger and improve my, uh, the strength of my deck to improve my gameplay is through the Guild Brawl system. So we will start out there. Okay, the UI has been, uh, they've been working on it uh, for a long time and it's gradually improved and gotten better uh, recently. Um, they've basically been, been redoing the UI to improve it for the mobile experience. And now as they've been talking about uh, moving, uh, thank goodness finally uh, t started talking about moving that into an app. Uh, they originally had an app and then uh, they decided to not support it and it went away, but uh, they have realized the importance of um, having an app. Uh, I've said this a number of times, you know, the uh, if you want to expand your game in this gaming climate, and I'm not a gaming expert, but the 
sheer number of people who game on mobile dwarfs that of people who play on PC or Mac. Okay, just from that aspect, if you want to get your game out there and get it seen and played by people, you need to be on a mobile app. So with that said, they have been improving the mobile in mobile browser experience, but that was a move to help position themselves as they've been started talking about over the last several weeks to move into uh, a new mobile app. So with that said, um, they have switched things around. So now you can go up to the Guild tab now and you can go straight to Brawls. So it has taken a little bit of time to kind of get used to the new uh, GUI, the new uh, graphical user interface. But once you go in here, you can see a number of things, okay? You can see uh, my guild, uh, you can see how much time is left in the brawl. And this is primarily for people who are newer to the game. Um, and the reason why, this is, to me, this is one of the major reasons why as soon as you start playing the game, you would want to join a guild, okay? I've been in a guild since I started playing the game because I immediately saw the value. And things have changed a little bit over the years, but you can still get good value out of uh, being in the guild and uh, playing your brawls. Okay, so at the base level, a brawl is a guild tournament that occurs once a week. OK, and when um, there's a, a day or two where the brawl opens up and you're allowed to choose, uh, this is the pre before the brawl goes live, you're allowed to choose in which um, fray uh, level uh, you want to compete. So you can compete all the way from the lowest to the highest. Right. And in this case, I chose to compete in silver level. And I chose to complete, compete in the Chaos Legion and Rebellion. Okay, so uh, I feel where I feel that this I can compete in gold, but due to my deck strength, I feel that I compete best in silver. Um, I can compete in gold if needed, um, but I found lately uh, I didn't use to compete in the Rebellion uh, phrase uh, because I don't have a large amount of Rebellion cards in my collection. However, I found that. Um, my strength in this type of fray has improved since the new Rebellion reward card set has come on the scene and I've been able to start collecting those. So that's why I chose this. But if you're relatively new to the game, you might ask yourself, well, hey, why would I want to, uh, you know, compete in these uh, guild uh, brawls? Well, uh, due to the how you place, how well you do, OK, your guild gets uh, a certain uh, brawl rewards. Um, and this helps advance the uh, the guild. The guild uh, the guild leader can use them to improve different buildings and bring uh, improve the guild overall. But what does it mean to you? Well, first of all, you get SPS out of the ba uh, out of each brawl. Okay, depending upon how you place, you get more SPS. That is immediately helpful for you as a player because you can turn around and stake that. Um, I think it's automatically staked. What you get out of the brawls is automatically staked, but that improves what you make in regular ranked play uh, because one of the things you need for ranked play is to have SPS staked. Okay, so you have a little bit, or in, uh, in some people's cases, a lot of SPS staked, so you earn more rewards. But the secondary thing that you will get out of this is you will get what's called merits. And merits was what I was. Um, originally uh, very interested in because at the very beginning um, there are a number of other ways you can get merits now but uh, up until I don't know a few months ago the only way you could get merits was to compete in guild brawls and merits was the way you got gladius cases now gladius cases uh, when you open them it's just a different kind of card pack um, gladius cases yield let me go over here to my card collection and clear it um, and go right to Gladius, um, regular foil. Gladius cards are some of the strongest cards in play. Uh, and especially when you can field two Gladius cards uh, in a hand uh, or per match, they are very strong. They take a long time to collect and uh, level up, but they are very strong. You can go through here and you can see some very popular cards. Uh, out of the whole set, uh, you may, this may be debatable, but I think Quora is probably the top of the rank. Uh, 
Now over here on the guild page, due to um, how how your guild is leveled up. One of the buildings that you have access to is the barracks. And um, depending upon the level, uh, every it looks like every three levels that your guild barracks levels up, you have the choice to banish a card, okay? And that means whenever you go into the brawl with another guild or another guild member, then that card will not be playable by them. The reason I state this or I bring this up is because uh, Quora is one of the most banished uh, cards there is. In fact, like I said, 75% of the time I'm playing and we're the opponent, uh, then or uh, it's it's ba banished. Uh, so people, it's a very strong card. Let's leave it at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to the brawl and go ahead and get into it. So uh, right off the bat, uh, once I go ahead, if you're relatively new, uh, once I go ahead and go into the brawl, which is just a, a regular type of match with certain uh, specifications, uh, I'll have two minutes to pick my cards. Um, I'll try to go ahead and explain a little bit what I'm doing. Um, but um, right off the bat, you can see that if you start a brawl in the green line, that means you're home arena in the red, you're the enemy. So um, that will dictate, like I was talking about banishing, there's a few other things that come into play there as well, uh, depending upon whether you're home or away or home or enemy, so to speak. So when I go into a home arena, I know right off the bat, uh, one of my strategies is that I'm going to try to use Earth as much as possible because it's got Quora in there and Quora is very strong. It's also got a few other very strong cards that I like to throw in there and are very viable in combat. But uh, I know that going into a home match, uh, I don't have to worry about Quora being um, banished. Okay, Now, our team will banish it from the opponent, right? Um, but, and that doesn't necessarily mean because there's a lot, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to automatically going to be able to play life and play Quora, um, because, uh, a match may came up, may come up rather, and life isn't one of the choosable, uh, splinters. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how it goes. Okay. So as you can see, we banished Quora and Kelia from the opposing team. We have rules of combat, which are, uh, we have uh, 22 plus one mana, uh, only monsters with magic may be used, no healing, um, and explosive weaponry. All monsters have the blast ability. So only monsters with magic uh, attack um, automatically leads me to want to play Earth wherein I can play Obsidian, which is plus one magic. Now there's different ways you can go about this, but this is usually how I go. I have 23 mana, which is relatively low, not really low mana. Um, usually at 23 mana, I don't want to throw Quora in there um, because she takes 10 mana in and of itself. Um, but what I can do is I do like to throw in a Goblin Psychic for healing. I'll throw in a reg Regal Paraton. Uh, Dr. Blight is always good. I have a few more mana. I don't know who I'm going to throw in as tank. Hmm, it's tough when it's uh when it's uh my timer is counting down. Hmm. I think that I'm going to take Dr. Blight off and I'm going to throw in Genie Guys. And I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in Ujirak Elder in the back, uh, primarily because she's got camouflage uh, and cannot be attacked directly. I have one more mana. Can I use it? I don't have anything for one or zero. So I guess the Regal Paraton is going to be my tank in this case, and we will go ahead and battle. And in this case, the uh, opponent had already put in their um, their team. So we're going to be able to see who wins this. Now, in some cases, if you put your teams in uh, early on when the brawl starts, it may just go through because uh, and you'll have to wait to see the outcome because the opponent may not have <clears throat> put in their team. So in this case, uh, they went in with uh, my uh, slip spawn, which is a very good tank. Um, and they went in with one of the newer cards, Zebagen. So uh, two high mana cards 
So they they chose to go with two high mana cards um, instead of uh, multiple low mana cards like I did. So let's see uh, who made the best selection here. Come on. Yep. And I brought it home. I find that a lot of times, and this is just personal experience, a lot of times, and uh, that I would prefer to have more cards on the field than just a couple really strong ones. That's just my findings. Um, your results may vary. And it also, it also varies depending upon the level of the card too, because I'm fighting at silver here. Now, fighting at gold or diamond or champ are totally different arguments because there's totally different strategies. So we'll go in there. So that's good. That's good. That's starting off the brawl in a good fashion. So I started off with one win. Now, the next uh, battle I have available here is I'm going to be the enemy or um, I'm going to fight in their arena. So once again, like I had said, they banished Quora, which I automatically figure. We've got Earthquake. All non-flying monsters take two melee damage each round. We've got Explosive Weaponry. All monsters have the blast ability. And we have Rise of the Commons. Only common and rare monsters may be available. So what I'm thinking about automatically here is I need some flying monsters. Um, and I'm trying to think of who I have the best uh, splinter as far as common uh, and rares go. So. Let's go in and hmm. Okay, so I have to think this through here. I only have 39 mana, so this is like a medium level match, uh, mid medium mana match. Let's go in and go in with Kelia. Um, and I'm searching for, let's separate by tanks or separate by melee rather. Pelicor Bandit is flying. Uh, Gargoyle Lion. Uh, I like Isgard Vol Volst. Uh, he is not. I'm going to take the Gargoyle Lion out. I'm going to go up front with Commander Slade. Let's look at... No, let's dump out of this. Okay, so... Let's go in with, uh, da, da, da. okay, let's go in with the War Pegasus. Let's go with uh, Venari Mark's Rat. Let's go in with Ajax Lightfoot, Venari Crystal Smith, get some range. Let's go, let's approach this from range perspective. Uh, Corsair Boson in second place. Let's go right up front with, eh, that's not going to fit. Okay, uh, let's see here. I've got seven. I've got seven mana to use. Let's go right up front with Gargoyle Devil uh, for, uh, he's got close range. Put War Pegasus in the back with flying, a little bit harder to hit. Uh, four speed, not terrible. Okay. Uh, three. What else do I have at three mana? Oh, I lost time. And that, my friends, is what happens when you take too long. I, I've always felt that there's not enough time to pick pick the damn team and try to explain to people. Let's go ahead. Keep going. This has really made me mad now. Okay, we've got another earthquake match. We've got super sneak. All melee attack monsters have the sneak ability. Uh, I, immediately, I think I'm going to go in with... Uh, I'm going to go in with Quicks. No, I'm going to go in with Lob Lowland. Um, I'm going to go in with Archimus the Bear first, backed up by Quora. Um, 
I'm going to throw in uh, Tatiana Blade in there. Um, I also want Thanalorian Blade, a new favorite of mine. Let's separate by higher level mana. Let's see here. I've got, uh, let's throw my Silic Lip Spawn in the back. And I've got four more mana. Let us, uh, how many mana is, she's gonna go in the back. Catrelba is six. So I'm actually going to Mm, it's tough. I'm going to take out Tatiana. I'm going to throw in Catrelba. And I have six mana left. And I am going to throw in the Goblin Psychic there. So, let's go. Okay, here we go. Uh, my opponent also... Oh! My, my opponent's uh, fielding a Nidhogger. Um, I'm always, already feeling not so great about this match. Uh, also throwing a bunch of power at me with an Agor long tail. Uh, followed up. Interesting placement for the Mycelic Slip Spawn. Um, Runic Skyclaw. I'm not feeling really great about this, but let's see who wins. Okay, need some action out of Korra. Okay, that was the damage from the earthquake. Really hurt me on that one. Okay, looks like I'm doing pretty well. Ooh, earthquake took my Katrubba out. Okay. Okay, we got this one. We got this one. Okay, starting off okay. Uh, two wins and one fled because I took too long. I've got uh, an assortment, two of e three uh, aways, uh, three enemies and two homes left. Okay, so let's go on in and do the next one. Once again, our Quora is banished. An additional gladiator card can be used in battles. Okay, very good. I think I'm going to go in and I'm going to go in with a Quix the Devious and I'm going to choose life. Uh, and I'm gonna throw some dragons at him. I got 50 mana to use. Um, I love rage. Uh, let's see here. What do we've got? What can we play with here? I use Marisol a lot. Um, Captain Katie's a favorite as well. Hmm. I like Ajax. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do. Let's make up our mind here. Okay. Let's go in. Um, do I want to spend the, man the uh, mana on Agor? I don't think I do. Um... Spend a little bit less, go in with Archimus the Bear, uh, follow him up with uh, Marisol. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, I'm gonna throw in Olivia, because I love using Olivia. Uh, very spicy, spice is the thing, um, the matchup, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, I like Venator Kinjo in the back. Let's just toy around with that for a minute. Um, let's take a look at magic. Um, Void Dragon, uh, Adelaide, uh, like her. Um, I've got 10 left. Um, do I want to throw in a Captain Katie? Let's throw in a Captain Katie and th put that in front of her. I'm leaving three mana on. You know, I could come back here and I could throw in um, Uriel. Let's try that. 
and I'm leaving four mana now on the board. Um, I feel pretty good about this layout. Uh, maybe my weak point here is Venator Kinjo. Two, four, six. Let's see what we can put in there for six so we don't leave any mana on the board. Um, let's go ahead and throw in Avis Sturgis. Eh, spice it up a little bit. I was getting low on time. Okay, so see, that's an example of a person who had not put in their match yet, so I have to wait for that. Um, and sometimes one of the values of actually going through and putting all your matches in uh, on a weekly basis is, you know, you get your SPS, you get your, um, your merits, uh, you get your points for the guild. Um, but sometimes you get an automatic win because the person you're up against forgets to put in their match or doesn't put in their match, um, and you get an auto win uh, because they didn't do it. Okay, so I have four left. I've uh, done four, and I have four left. Okay, next one is a home arena. See what we draw here. Uh, close. Okay, so we can only use five uh, cards. All monsters have a divine shield and reverse speed, uh, which means that it behooves you to use slow cards. Um, I'm automatically thinking about using uh, life right out of the bat because I've got some big life cards that are slow. And once again, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use Fran's rough main. Uh, I've got the extra mana to use him. Um, Let's filter by high mana Oko. So I usually like to play with Marisol, but she's very fast. Um, so let's go in with, uh, I don't know. Seems like most of my cards are like three speed. I only have five spots to use. Okay, let's go in up front with Uriel. Um, Let's Corsair Boson, I think in this usually I would go with Marisol, but he is a little bit slower than her. Uh Janny Rebel. I think I'm gonna end up leaving Archimus in the back. I need a little bit of range damage. Uh let's put uh Tatiana. I've been wanting to use her. You know, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm thinking about that's exactly 56 mana. Um, I was thinking about pulling out Archimus. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking about putting Captain Katie in in, in place of uh, Janny Rebel. I'm going to pull this, put this in, and I'm going to put in Captain Katie. I'm leaving three mana on the table, but I feel that... Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take Archimus out, and I'm going to put Iziar in the back. A little bit of more damage. Okay. So once again, I have two matches pending now. Now, this is something interesting I've noted over the last, I don't know, few weeks, is the fact that some places, some people are selling their guilds, and you will see a guild that is marked in some form or fashion, guild for sale. And a lot of times I've been seeing lately is that these people will go through and enter the brawls, hoping that they get a few free wins. But I've seen a lot of times where... Um, they don't end up putting in all their brawls, uh, if any. So we'll see how this, this goes. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and enter. The next one is Enemy Arena. Once again, uh, we have uh, Quora Banished. Uh, we have Unprotected Monsters do not have any armor. Uh, so uh, that's removed. Uh, equalizer, the initial health of all monsters is equal to that of the monster on either team with the, the highest base health. Um, so in these kind of instances, you want to try to keep your ma your health down on your monsters to take advantage of that. And we have one of the new fight types, uh, Might Makes Right. 
you can only summon units with three or more ranged magic or melee power, which is interesting because this works against this because usually you try to get a bunch of low mana cards in there for equalizer, and then this is like the exact opposite. These do not go together well. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go in. I think that I'm going to go in with the uh, green. Um, and I'm not doing Obsidian. I think I'm going to use that extra mana and go with Loblo Land because I want to go in specifically with Catrelba. Um, I'm going to put in Halfling Refugee in front of her. I'm going to... How many life does she... She has four. Um, refugee has six. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> trying to keep this down or the the life on them down okay I have a very limited selection here let's let's back out of this control is strong but let's go in and look at Tarsa see what I have to select from there you know what Let's go in with uh, Tenny Striker and Fina Fixum. How many mana do I have left? I have less than a minute. Let's go up front with, uh, I don't know. Let's go up front with the rats, exploding rats. I have four. Jin Apprentice, getting low on, low on, okay, let's just do that. I'm not feeling so great about that, but uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, my last home arena, one left, one home arena and one enemy arena. We got 39 plus one, uh, going the distance, which is can only use range, uh, equal opportunity, and earthquake. Now, usually on these matches, I go in, uh, since I know they're gonna be using range, I go in with quick Sedevious, and I'm going to play life. Uh, interesting part here is that it's earthquake. Um, Mid-level match, uh, I do like using these two. And I was specifically thinking about that when I chose this, um, but if it lasts more than four rounds, I'm going to go up right up front with Zrax. Uh, I don't know. This is not a very popular card, but he's got a uh, close range. Um, let's go up front with Zyvax, and then let's go, let's throw Runic Skyclaw in there. And, yeah, let's leave that in the back. I've got two left. Uh, I've got uh, 10, 11 mana left. Hmm. And a War Pegasus. That's got flying. So I've got four. Do I have anything I can throw in there for four? Gallicus in the back with Taunt? Yeah. Why not? Let's try it. Okay. Uh, I don't know how well I'm feeling about that, but let's try it. Okay, what what uh, opponent go in? Um, oh, Secret Stashers. Uh, that must be the uh, Secret Stash Club. Watch him once in a while on YouTube. Uh, Tatiana Blade up front uh, with uh, Venaria Marks Rat. Good choice. Drybone Raider. I don't have much luck with Drybone Raider. He used War Pegasus as well. He liked Ajax as well. Now, the interesting is, you know, I probably should have put Ajax Lightfoot back here and War Pegasus up here. But I put him back here because I wanted to get more damage. Um, okay, well, let's see. I don't know how I feel about this. Let's see how it goes. Okay, and they got the martyr effect. We got the healing going on. I like the healing. Uh, come on, I'm not feeling so great about this yet. Earthquake hit a few of them. Okay, that's good. Took that one out. 
Okay, I'm feeling a little bit better about this now. Oh, he got that. Is he going to pull this out? Oh, earthquake, earthquake. Oh, crap. Okay, so I think I got this. Yes. Some of these battles come down. <laughs> Sometimes you never know how it's going to come out. So there we go. Okay, so I have one, two, three wins, three pending, and I have one left. So let's go ahead and put it in. See how this comes out. Okay, once again. Oh, oh, interesting choice. They went with uh, banishing Katroba Gobson. Uh, broken arrows, no range, no uh, neutral. And uh, Rise of the Commons, Commons and Rares, um, once again. So I have to go in. I cannot use Katroba. Um, I think I'm going to go in and I'm going to go with uh, Kelia. Um, we've got 34 mana to use. Let's see who our tank is going to be. Um, let's go in. I usually pick a Demon Shark. I like Commander Slade, but I don't have quite enough mana to use him. Let's go in with Demon Shark. That's eight mana though. Uh, you know what? Let's go in with uh, Cruel Cethropod. And then uh, I always like my Pelicor Bandit. Let's try a Deep Lurker. Um, thinking about the Relinor Cleaver. I'm using up my mana too fast. Um, can't use that. Uh, let's see here. Throw the Venari Wave Smith in there for uh, a little bit of armor. I've got four mana left. What can I do with four mana? Uh, okay, amplify and cleanse. Um, I don't know how much that's going to do me. Oh, I'd rather have the uh, Merdali Guardian. Yeah, let's throw the Merdali Guardian in there um, and go ahead and battle. I left one mana on the table, but. Okay, what did he come in with? Uh, came in with the Mycelic Inventory. Oh, he came. He loaded strong. Uh, Bertrand Gobson, Catrilba Gobson, healing. Uh, I think he's got me. I think he's got me on this one. Let's see how it turns out. Come on, crawfish. He always looks like a crawfish to me. Okay. It's one good good move. We need to take out Katrubba. We need to take out Katrubba. Oh, and my tank just went down. Okay, I got a good secondary tank. Okay, okay. Come on, we need to take out... Oh, she just went up. Okay. Can we take out Katrubba? She's pretty harsh. Yes! I wasn't feeling good about that, to tell you the truth. Okay. So there you go. I mean, uh, I, I, I wanted to do this on video. So if you haven't done it and you're just jumping into the game and you're a little bit wary about getting into a guild, jump into a guild and start playing brawls. Just start at the bottom. Start at the bottom and um, and do what you can and work your way up as your um, as your deck gets stronger. You get a lot of experience going into these as well. You can choose exactly which fray you want to be in. I, I guess some guilds, the guild leader assigns frays because that's always possible as well. Uh, it always behooves guilds to fill all their frays at this point in time, um, just in case uh, one of the other guilds they're fighting against doesn't enter, then it's like free points. So, okay, so there you go. Um, we have three matches pending, uh, so we'll have to come back and uh, after those have been put in and see how that goes. So uh, one of the other different, uh, there's many different facets to uh, the game currently, and I, I think that's one of the, um, the hurdles the team has come up against. Uh, they, have to, they have a small team. They have to decide what to work on, really, and focus their efforts to get things out. Um, but if you're relatively new to the game, um, there's also a land portion to splinter lands and this goes back years ago they they started selling land and it took a long time to come out and it's it's still in the works uh, it is out in a certain fashion um, you can have your property and you can do one of three things on it you can grow grain you can uh, do research on it or you can mine um, uh, sps token 
Um, and the research uh, as of right now doesn't have any real use. People who have uh, started doing research are amounting or amassing their research points for some time in the future when uh, they have an actual uh, uh, usage in the game. They've talked about a number of different ways to go about implementing that, but it's still in the works right now. But uh, if you go in, you can buy, sell, trade, land at this point. Uh, but one of the things that you have to do once you get up and running, and I'm going to do right now, is one of my weekly kind of, I don't want to call it chores. I really, it falls under the maintenance category. You can do it once a day or multiple times if you want to, but you have to claim what you've made on your land. So if you go uh, over to the production uh, tab, you'll see that I have a number of different parcels. Uh, I believe I have, let's see here. Uh, 14 yeah 14 and I'm spread out in three different regions um, and I'm a hundred percent vested I'm I, I have everything that I have bought up and running you can buy a parcel of land and let it sit there and uh, some people have some people bought land and they're looking towards the future whether they're aiming at getting it up and running in the future or whether they're just holding it uh, uh, prospecting you know like uh, buying it now at a lower price and then hoping in the future to resell it at a higher price um, one of the things you have to do after you get your land up and running is to uh, stake cards on it and um, the higher the level of the card and also if the card and the higher the rarity of the card and also the older the card and also if it's gold foil all come into play many different variables on how many production points that card will give you on land and you can put up to five on each land my approach uh, at the very beginning I started off um, I thought it was pretty large logical at that time and I've kind of followed it up into this time is I bought chaos legion gold foil commons maximum level and i stake those out across all my lands because i got a pretty uh, decent amount of production points on those now over time i've slowly because chaos legion is the most affordable uh set of cards there is now there's a few instances where i put some beta cards um on land um but by and large they're all gold foil maximum uh comments but over the last few months, I've been, whenever I can find a good deal on a rare gold foil uh, Chaos Legion, I will pick that up and substitute that in. And then that slowly brings up my production power across my land. I haven't been, been putting a whole lot of money into it because really, frankly, right now, uh, at this point, if your whole goal is just to amass more SBS, it makes more financial uh, feasibility, if you will, um, to just buy the SPS instead of buying land and mining SPS because you have to put so much into the land to get it up and running that it just really doesn't make sense. But I've been approaching it that I have it up and running and I'm just slowly improving it. So as time goes along and they're working on land a little bit at a time, things come along that hopefully I'm in a good position to go ahead and do whatever with it because, you know, uh, we've been kind of in a holding pa pattern for the last, I don't know, year or so. Um, and things are moving slowly because um, small production team, small uh, R&D team, okay? And they've, they've really prioritized the main game and the new player experience and a number of other things that they talk about on the, the recent town hall instead of land. They do have, and they just passed in a, a Dow proposal uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, um, to hire on uh, somebody that's been working for them, but now is being paid by the Dow to specifically work for uh, work on land. So I don't, I'm not exactly sure uh, exactly what the status of that is, but it's still moving ahead a little bit at a time. Um, but it would be kind of what I would consider on the back burner has been for months. But as time gone, has gone along, like I said a few minutes ago, is that what you can do is you can go in here and you can harvest on a daily or weekly basis. Now, you have to harvest at least once a week because the seven days is the cutoff period. At seven days, you're not going to make, you're not going to amass anything else on that land until you go ahead and you claim it um, and then you can start uh, making again. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and go in here and claim it. And if you're wondering what I'm doing off screen, I uh, keep track of what I claim on a spreadsheet. 
and I'll bring that over just so you can see. Uh, just a basic spreadsheet, nothing fancy, uh, but I do keep track of everything I harvest. I don't know exactly what I'll ever need that for, but since I started, uh, I just kept track of everything. So let's go ahead and go into harvest. The first area I'm in is in uh, Veritas, which is uh, number one. Um, let's go ahead and do harvest all and claim grain. That's the first thing we're gonna claim. Okay, so um, this is the, the gross amount that I claimed, but then you have to take out uh, um, the taxes. So this is really the net down here is what we're looking at. 32,758.487. Okay, when you harvest, you also have a very minuscule chance at uh, getting a totem fragment, uh, which is another slight improvement I've made on a few of my lands is I have common totems across all my lands parcels, but on a few of them, I've been able to upgrade to rare, which boosts the output. Okay, so this is SPS uh, harvested. Um, now, keep in mind, this is a little bit over a six day claim. So this isn't daily. So uh, off of one land, um, which is a rare, um, I've gotten 34, almost 35, 293, uh, almost 35 SPS uh, for six days, okay? Just give you some kind of idea. But as you'll notice, uh, I've went with a averaging out um, across my uh, regions I have land in. in. In other words, I have two rare parcels. I have one mining SPS, I have one mining grain or harvesting, uh, growing grain, and I, and I have them staked out so that um, this one growing grain makes enough grain to feed both of these parcels, okay? So I don't have to go, one thing I didn't want to have to do is go on the market and have to be buying grain every several days, okay? I understand that going forward, the game's gonna change, and I may have to do that going forward when when um, more changes are put into the game. In other words, uh, after the next few changes go in, uh, not all parcels are gonna be able to grow grain. Not all parcels are gonna be able to mine SPS. Not all parcels are gonna be able to do uh, uh, research. So uh, things are gonna change, but as of right now, I've got these averaged out. Okay, so that, is that concludes uh, my uh, harvesting for that region. We'll go into the next region, which is 114. And once again, we will uh, do a harvest all. You can see that in this region, I have five plots of land. I have three, uh, three of them that are harvesting grain, one on SPS and one on research. Um, so it's kind of averaged off. I'm making a lot extra grain here. You can see in this readoff um, that I'm only, I'm in this region, I'm only required to make five, I only need 590 grain per hour to keep everything going, but I'm, uh, I'm growing 732. And from time to time I go in and I sell a little bit of grain to make a little bit extra uh, DEC on the side. So let's go ahead and harvest all. Let's do claim grain. Be nice to get a, uh, totem fragment. So we have 64,387. Sorry if this is boring, but I do like to keep track of it. 318 grain. Okay, now research. Let's go ahead and claim research. I am collecting research. Uh, like I said, I haven't been able to use it for anything, but uh, they've talked about a number of ways uh, that they're gonna use it in the future. I collected a little bit over 551.095 research. And finally, let's do our SPS claim. And when this gets claimed, it goes directly to your staked amount, 35. A little bit over 35.731. Okay. 
So like I said, this is really just maintenance, uh, collecting things, um, but you do need to do it at least once per week. Some people do it a lot more often. Uh, okay, so this is my last one, Ravenwood. Um, and this is the one that I have the most parcels of land in. You can see I have seven, but once again, I'm averaged out. Um, so I have one with research, three with grain, and three with SPS, uh, four rares and three commons, okay? Let's go ahead and claim the grain. This result will be very much similar to the last. So we've got 59,000. 970.457. Okay. Research. Just as an aside, uh, yesterday, in case you don't know, we do have a weekly um, live stream. It occurs on Saturday at 1130 Eastern time. It's called my uh, Saturday morning stand-up. We discuss all things Splinterlands, as well as other high blockchain games, other games in general, and play to earn games uh, such as Atlas Earth. So if you wanna drop by, we usually have 20, 30, uh, sometimes up to 50 people hanging around uh, talking about this type of thing. Um, the more the merrier. Um, but one thing that came out of my uh, live stream yesterday was the fact that I bought a Dragon Jumper. I have been averaging buying like one card a week, so I haven't completely quit. And I'm just kind of in the situation where I have learned that um, I'm going to be a wild player. Uh, I think the evolution of the game is very similar to other card games in that the way they make money, the way card companies, um, collectible card ca companies make money is selling cards. So that's the same way with Splinterlands and it's the same way with Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and other games like that. So they're going to try to entice you uh, to go ahead and buy the newest cards and that's fine. I have nothing against that. But at a certain point you have to decide um, where are you going to put your money and how much money you're going to spend? One of the primary things that led me away from Magic the Gathering was as time went along and the time between sets decreased, so there was more cards to buy, um, and uh, if you were going to compete at a higher level, which I never did, but I competed on the local level pretty good, um, but it got to the point where there was a new set and you had to buy the new set and it was just a big expenditure expenditure of money which at that time i wasn't really making money off of i get prizes cards and stuff at that time i i remember probably the best card i ever won was a, a mox jet unlimited but um the same thing applies to splinterlands okay to play in modern um you are going to continue to have to buy the newest stuff which is the business model for the company right sell the cards and i have nothing against that but if you want to uh, go ahead and play your older cards, you can play in wild. So I've made the, I've come to terms with the fact that I'm going to be a wild player. Do you have to pay a, a, a fee to play in wild on a season basis? Yeah, but it's it's not that much. Uh, anywhere between a buck or two, depending upon what the value of, of DEC. Um, and I'm still having fun with the game, so I'm I'm fine with that. I do think that it's an interesting hurdle that the company is going to have to overcome. And what I mean by that is that generally collectible card games, um, as card gets, cards get older, their values go up. Okay, And an interesting thing that we've seen due to a lot of different combined uh, variables that have happened with Splinterlands over the last year or two is the fact that a lot of the older cards have come down in price. Okay, And that's because of the wild and modern changes and a number of different things uh, you know like the newer sets coming out and uh, power creep and things of this nature so there's a lot to that and it's a big wide open discussion you can leave your comments in the comments section let me know how you feel um, but i've come to terms with the fact that i'm going to be a wild player from here on out uh, i may dabble in modern but once chaos legion leaves modern I can't. I just say, as a, on a personal basis, I can't afford to put a couple thousand dollars into the game uh, to buy the newest cards every time a set comes out, uh, and that's a personal choice. Uh, do could I rent? Yeah. To me, renting is tedious. Okay. Are, have they made uh, uh, big changes in renting and made it uh, get a little bit easier? Yes, but it's still very tedious to me. That's why I've always approached from the buying perspective. But with that said. The reason why I'm buying a card here and there is because I like uh, 
I buy cool cards and I've got a focus due to my name, Bronze Dragon, on the Dragon cards. Do I know that those are immediately the best cards to pick? Oh, probably not. But I've always been like that. I've always picked cards that I thought was cool and hopefully they'd improve the uh, value of my deck. And like I said, or the p play value rather. Um, and like I said, none of this is investment advice. Uh, take it for what you will. But what I was trying to do in this video is show people who are relatively new to the game a couple facets of the game, which would be playing brawls and then also, um, you know, uh, upkeep on land. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And hey, I'll see you in Splinterlands. Thank you.